Chinese travelers were amazed to find female judges, officials, and scribes among the Khmer people in Cambodia. In Vietnam, too, the Chinese were struck by women's freedom, so much so that this artist wrote Nu Dang Gua, Country of Women, above these women drummers, and not because there were no men in Vietnam. Chinese sources place countries of women in the eastern and western regions of Tibet. In 586, Sui dynasty accounts describe a new Wang in eastern Tibet, Later Chinese records say women ruled this country until the election of a man in 742. European colonizers were similarly shocked to find that American Indian women were not chattel, but potent economic, cultural, and political forces, including female chieftains, elders, shamans, and providers. Here Aliquipiso of the League of the Six Nations meets with Lieutenant George Washington. Iroquois men reprimanded male settlers for disdaining female power. Brothers, our ancestors considered it great offense to reject the counsels of their women, particularly the female governesses. They were esteemed the mistresses of the soil. The Cherokee Atakulakula, uncle to the beloved woman Nanyehi, distrusted the all-male envoys of colonial America, demanding of them, Where are your women? The participation of women in diplomacy guaranteed peaceful intentions, while their absence was a bad sign, as events bore out. Political office is only one of many female spheres of power. Now we turn to the mother right cultures, where the authority of clan mothers and women elders is embedded in the social fabric. <laughs> The Haudenosaunee, or League of the Iroquois, exemplify this integral respect for women. Their Kayanere Goa, Great Law of Peace, states, The lineal descent of the people of the five nations shall run in the female line. Women shall be considered progenitors of the nation. They shall own the land and the soil. Men and women shall follow the status of their mothers. This indigenous constitution gave weight to women elders, the Ganta Wisas, who selected male chiefs and could remove them if necessary. Seneca scholar Barbara Mann states that the men's council could take no political action before the women's council forwarded it over for deliberation. Out of the many mother rights societies in Southeast Asia, the Moswa culture of Yunnan has become famous for its egalitarian gender relations and a social system built around brothers and sisters living together under the guidance of female clan heads. The security of children is guaranteed because economic survival and shelter are not tied to love matches. Minangkaba women of western Sumatra show a confident dignity that flows from their Adat Ibu mother tradition. They trace descent from a first woman, Bundu Kanduang, and remain staunchly matrilineal, although they converted to Islam centuries ago. Land passes from the mothers to children, and husbands come to live in their wives' households. Many Aboriginal Vietnamese Highlanders sustain matrilineal and matrilocal cultures, with customs of female courtship and gender equality. These are day women pound rice outside their longhouse, next to statues of an ancestral mother and brother. The Bapende mounted images of ancestral mothers on their clan lodges in southern Congo. They belong to what has been called the Bantu matrilineal belt of South Central Africa, which stretches from Namibia and Angola to Malawi and Mozambique. Travelers in the Sahara have long been impressed with the grandeur and freedom of Tuareg women. Some of the Kel Tamashek, their true name, retain the matrilineal traditions described by medieval Arabs and ancient Greeks. All trace descent from a common female ancestor. The Akan peoples represent a major mother right tradition in West Africa, most famously the Ashanti of Ghana. 
They have parallel offices for women from the clan level to the national queens or Asante Hema. In Colombia, the Wayuu people live in matrilineal clans based on the principles of human solidarity and an alliance with nature, as the elder Renilda Martinez says. Women play central roles as weavers, artists, and shamans, las piaches, 